Welcome, welcome. Ziggy1x here with another near reincarnation video. And here we are. We are in the closing hours of Arena. We've got the teams lined up. I'm going to actually not go the Arena Nightmares route and just try and smash my way through the Arena and get lucky, but I'm actually going to be analytical about this. And we're going to use some basic understanding of what we have with my own teams and use that to compare to the teams that we're going to be going up against. Now, those of you who are familiar with Arena, we've got a list of three teams here. Those are the three teams that we're available to. We could click that refresh button on top of them to refresh and get three new teams. We're going to try and avoid that if possible, though, and we're going to try and go through and do the teams that we can do. Now, I've got different teams lined up here. I built a team for different scenarios and maybe a few testers and maybe one meme team in there, and you'll get to it here in a minute. But this first team, what is the purpose of this first team? We've got Griff. Griff can be the mate shield. He can take the hits. Demios makes Griff tougher, makes the whole team tougher. But what Griff or but what Demios is also doing is he's using the subjugation greatsword to boost the fire damage of the team. And then we've got Yuri here, who's using the EX Akaha weapon to nuke the other team. Now this is for this is for going up against really really fast teams, because what happens is is or really fast cooldown. And what happens is is that I want to build my Griff tough enough to be able to soak up all that incoming damage and then let my other two guys get out and kill the other team. Now let's look at the next one. This is my first snipe team. Now this is a team I was experimenting a little bit with, and you'll notice this is a mono light element team. I've got celebratory, or I've got Alice, how are you, boosting the light damage of the whole team with the subjugation weapon. And then I've got some pretty fast characters in here. Now they may not be the fastest, but you'll notice that another thing, this doesn't really play out to huge advantage, but sometimes it can edge out the battle. Since it's a mono element team, all I have to do is worry about boosting my light damage. The other two companions are geared towards the elements that I'm typically going to be receiving most, which are dark and fire. Okay, so this is a fast team. Now, the next one, this is my Nuke 2 team. This one, instead of Celebratory Demios, has Celebratory Akeha in it. Now, for all of these teams, I'm going to be running them at standard speed and on manual. You'll see why when I get into it here, but it is critical, especially if you're using Celebratory Demios, Celebratory Akeha, or Griff, and or all of them, that you run it on manual, and I'll show you why when we get into the battle here. It's very, very, very important. But the benefit of it is, is that if you're the attacking team, you're playing at 1x speed on manual, you always have the advantage against the team you're going up against. What will happen is, is if you're playing it on auto, the other team, the opposing team, will always have the advantage themselves, and you will be at a disadvantage. But as soon as you switch it on to manual and you do the tap, quick tapping, all that stuff, and I'll show you when we get into the battle here, you are the one who's at the advantage. So this is my true bunker buster team. This is meant for Griff to take a few hits, but the cooldown on Akeha and Celebratory Yuri are timed as such to where I can fire off Akeha's character skill to boost damage and decrease defense of the other team, and then fire off her two weapon skills, and then fire off Yuri's two weapon skills, build a chain, build some damage, boom. All right, but this is only useful against teams that are not super fast. If you're going against a true cooldown team, this attack doesn't work very well. And in, in addition to that, it doesn't work very well on defense because Celebratory Akaha, she's gonna fire off her ability, but by the time your team gets around to attacking, her buff is already gonna be used up. So it's basically just wasting time on your characters for their own cooldown. I'll get into that in the fight. Next team, we have my Snipe 2 team. Instead of uh, Yuri in there, I've got, I've got a, a Lacrima Leviathan. And uh, basically the same thing, it's just Leviathan instead of, instead of Yuri. And then this next one here is a bit of a hybrid. So we have a true sniper team, a true speed team, rusher, with turrets, with uh, agility tuned to the max and everything else. And then we have a true tank team. And then we have kind of a, kind of a bunker buster team. Now this is a hybrid team. This is two fast characters and, and Alice Saryu is boosting the agility of the team. So these both, both Saryu and um, Yuri are very fast, but then I've got Griff there to soak up some damage so that they can get out, they can do their auto attacks and Griff can soak up a little bit of damage while their cooldowns, their very fast cooldowns on their weapons fire off and do the other things. And then we've got this team right here. Now this was a test team. I was playing around with a couple different ideas. Let's just ignore this and let's go to the next one. 
This is the meme team. So we've got the automata group here. The question is, can the first three collaboration characters that we ever got in this game over a year ago compete in top 20 of Arena? I might test this out a little bit. I'm dubious, but I'll test it out for science. So let's jump on back here real quickly. Now, we've got a couple teams here. I'm gonna go back to my nuke one. Now, there's a couple of things. Let's understand the enemy first. We've got here Yuda, rank 32, fire, water, and light. We know immediately that we're gonna have a subjugation, uh, that we're gonna have probably very likely three subjugation weapons in there. We're gonna have the great sword, we're gonna have the spear, and we're gonna have the staff, which means we're probably very likely going to have uh, Snow White Akeha. Now, by the way, 367 team power, this would normally be reserved for a team with EX weapons. And so that would mean that they would have high cooldown, but slower attacks. So they would cool down all at the same time, and then once they're all their once all their abilities start firing off your toast. But you have a moment there to snipe them before they get a chance to attack. I don't think that's going to be the case with this team because Snow White Akeha has very high force. And I think that if you awaken, uh, I think if you awaken Saryu as well, she has a very high force as well. Now this could also be a, uh, a this could either be the uh, Fractured Noel or the Red Riding Hood Noel. My guess is that it's going to be a theme team. And I'm just saying that because of the high force. This would normally be reserved for a high EX weapon team with a tank in it, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think this is going to be a speed team just by looking at who's the highest power, who's on the, who's on the cover there. The next one here is Gallo. Now, this is going to be an EX team, and I can tell you right now, that is because of, that is because of um, uh, Dark Memory Akeha. She's gonna have her own sword, there will be a tank in there, and there probably will be a Demos in there. So it's gonna halt the income, this is gonna be a slow team. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to rely on my cooldown if I'm gonna fight this team, outpacing their team, or I'm gonna have to get a really fast team like this one in there to snipe the Akeha first. If I snipe the Akeha first, I can win this match. Otherwise, I lose. Now, there is an element, a huge element of RNG to the snipe teams because they rely heavily on the combo attacks and they rely heavily on the, uh, the one, two, three, four, five attacks that come off just from the regular attacks without using the weapon skills. Now, this can either be a one hit or a five hit. If it's a one hit, sucks to be you. There's also the chance that those hits will be countered. And so that is, you're running two risks when you run a snipe team like this. There's a lot more RNG involved, but it also typically makes for a slightly better defensive team because when people are going up against teams, they want something to be consistent. If you're going up against a really fast team that sometimes one shots you and sometimes misses, it just becomes frustrating. So you typically, when you're on the offensive, try to avoid those teams. That's why in my personal experience, teams with high agility, high damage, and fast weapon cooldown skills, I kind of avoid them. I actually hunt for teams with tanks because I know how to be a bunker buster better. And so this last one here, 500, and by the way, 270,000, there's gonna, I don't think there's gonna be very much speed in this team, but this one right here, 252,000 at the bottom, Victra. I think this is gonna be a fast team, and you can also tell by the weapon elements. Water, wind, dark. Dark is gonna be for Lavania. Wind is probably gonna be for Yuri. And then water's probably gonna be for Noel. Now, almost exclusively, if you're going up against a, um, a fractured Noel, she's always gonna get the first attack, that first auto attack in. So whether you win the match or not, largely depends on RNG. Cause she's gonna get out. And if she hits your main attacker, who's a little squishier, you're toast. So with no further ado, let's jump into it. I kind of want to go after Yuda, but this is going to be this is a this is a very challenging team I'm I'm sure. But this will prove what I'm talking about here. This is going to be an incredibly powerful team with a lot of damage. And so for that, I want to go over here to this team. I want to be able to soak up as much incoming damage as possible, but then fire off my skills. So this is going to be my counter to a fast and powerful team here, a lot of defensive capabilities. Let's go into it and see what happens. Yes, okay. 
No, I'm wrong. Okay. So, this is a change up. Oh, I've got auto on. Let's turn the auto off. Boom, 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 boom. All right, you'll notice here that they don't have any of their, and I did that all on manual. They don't have any of their weapons cooling down yet. None of their skills. Now, when you, as soon as you tap a character skill or a weapon skill on your characters, as soon as it activates, all of your other cooldowns pause. All right. This is going to be dangerous. This could be a lost cause. We shall see. Ooh, boy. Yep, that's a lost cause. So I misjudged that team. Now that I know what that team is, I can incorporate a different team. So that team was tanky. So what I'll use next is my Bunker Buster team. So let's go ahead and switch over here to the next one. Now, this is, I have that one team there. Now I know, and what their job is, is to debuff my team enough to where I don't do as much incoming damage. But let's just go ahead and switch over here to this guy. Now you'll see the difference once we get started. You'll realize, you'll, you'll see, and by the way, the stats are almost ex identical across the board. The only difference is Celebratory Akeha. You will see how much more damage my Celebratory Akeha and my Yuri do. So let's go ahead and select them. Okay, that's great. And the reason why that's great is because now I've done a little bit of damage. So when Yuri does her AOE nuke, let's wait for that to charge up a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So now this battle's in the back. There's no way I can lose this fight because their abilities are still charging. Mine are firing off. As long as my abilities are firing off, I'm good. Like, I've got this in the back. Boom. There goes Mocha Joe. And we are good. We've got the tank up. This is going to be golden. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You see how much easier that fight was just by changing up one of the mechanics in my team. Since I'm manualing this, i got to pay a little bit more attention. Boom. Okay. So just from switching between Demios and Celebratory, uh, and Celebratory Akeha, I was able to make all the difference. Now, I misread that team. I should have seen the team force there and understood that there would be more EX weapons, but they made a spoof team. They had fire, they had light, and they, or was it dark? They had, they had the three elements that you'd normally associate with the subjugation weapons. So when I looked at it, I thought this is probably just a very powerful team that has the correct elements. So they did that deliberately to spoof incoming attackers. So now I know what Yuta's doing. So now I can, unless they change up their team, since we're in the closing hours of arena, you know, things can happen. So let's take a look at this. Now, typically for arena strategy wise, you want to be hitting teams that are higher rank than you, because if you lose, you don't lose as many points, but if you win, you gain more points. So it's a win-win. But then the risk of that is, is that you're going up against teams that are higher ranked, which means that they've earned that rank by one means or another. Now, this is going to be a fast team. That's my wager. So I'm gonna go back here. Now, is their team faster than my team? Could I go up against this team with a, with a speed team? There's a possibility of that. And actually, I think I might just try that, even though if their Noel is faster than mine, then I lose this match. So let's try this out. Let's try speed against speed, even though normally what I would do for this team is I would opt for this guy. Demios will buff up my grip. He'll be able to soak up the incoming damage. And then in theory, I'll be able to survive it and nuke the, other, the, nuke the rest of the team with Yuri. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be an idiot. So let's try out my brand new team that I haven't even tested in battle yet, my mono light team, and see what happens. Actually, or better yet, I'll tell you what, let's try this brand, brand new team that I made that has a little bit of defensive capability. And so it could take a few hits, but also has some fast snipers. So let's give this a shot and see how this works. And this, of course, is if you have Bloody Griff. Not all of us have him. That's why I built a few teams without him, just to kind of show that there is different ways to approach the strategy. Okay. 
Now this is a fast team, so let's go ahead and fire Griff off first. And I'm gonna be manually tapping on him. Ooh, that is a powerful, powerful Marie. Okay. So now light damage is boosted. I messed up on that one a little bit. Let's go ahead and get rid of Marie. Boom. Okay, I have this in the bag, no problem. So my hybrid strategy worked and I got and also I got lucky cuz that Marie, any character she had come after would have been toast. Just absolutely toasted. So that was kind of halfway lucky, kind of not. But in the end, if I had gone for a purely speed team, I still probably would have won that. My team was a little bit faster than theirs for the other two characters. Their Marie, that's a god tier Marie, probably has her own debris, which is it's either 30 or 40 percent water damage up for the 30 seconds, so it's a huge damage boost. It's just a giant steroid for water damage. So let's take a look at this next guy. Okay, we got Supremacy here. I know this guy. We've got probably a fast team here. And I know this player is really, really good. So this is a this is a tough one for me. I might want to just go back to my tried and true defensive method because my guess is, is that he's going to have some squishy units in there, but he's also going to have the Griff. So let's try this out. I wanna make sure that I've got the correct memoirs to resist him, so I'm gonna put up my light resistance. And this is another reason why the attacking team always has the advantage to some degree. And I'm gonna put up my water resistance. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's see if I can beat Supremacy. Now, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do, this team's probably gonna be somewhat of a hybrid team, so I'm gonna to wanna to really quickly tap on my Demios, manual tap my Demios character skill and my Griff character skill. So immediately I'm mitigating damage. Yeah, this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be a fast team. So I'm mitigating damage. Woo boy, see? I got unlucky on that one. But I'm also drawing damage. So let's see if I can still pull the fat out of the fire on this one. I don't think I'll be able to win this one now because he took down my Demios, which is where a lot of my damage for my Yuri is coming from, as well as some of the, ooh, it's close, it's close, ooh. No, I think I still got this one in the bag. Yep, I got this one in the bag still. Yep, let's see what happens. Hmm. You know, that crow's gonna fire off and do some bad, bad, naughty things to my griff. So let's, as quickly as possible. Oh, well, I may be able to pull this one out. All right, sweet. So I got a little unlucky in the beginning, but because I went for kind of a tanky build, that AOE nuke got rid of the Saryu, and now the rest of it is just gonna be in the bag. Now let's see what Yuri does with her. Let's see how much damage Yuri does with her character skill. Oh, that. <laughs> Over a million damage. Sorry, Griff, you're you're done. <laughs> that was, what was that, 300 plus times five? So yeah, yikes. See you, Griff. So now we've got a 270, a 280, and a 250. This DK team down here is probably going to be really fast. This team right here, light, okay, Yuzuki. This is probably actually going to be all Sin and Alice collaboration units which means that I may want to keep this team because I want to tank up my team as much as possible because there's going to be a lot of incoming damage. So the big damage dealers are going to probably be uh, light and fire. So let's keep the light. Let's turn on the fire. Let's go from there. Now I'm going to do the same method where I do the ghost tapping with my Demios and my Griff and I'm gonna try and beat their incoming rush and then let my abilities charge up. Yep, oh boy, danger, danger, Will Robinson. Okay, so I made it. So let's get rid of Akeha first. Okay, so remember, don't start firing off your abilities until all the abilities you wanna use are about ready to be charged. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so they've only charged up two of their abilities, which means that once these abilities are done, I'm gonna be able to fire off my guys. 
Okay, we've got this one in the bag. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So taking the time to build these teams. There's a lot of work in memoirs in here, by the way, which is why the last four videos I have done have been regarding, or the last three videos that I've done have been specifically focused on memoirs because the difference between you need the characters, you need the other stuff, as evidenced by what I'll show you with my meme team near Automata team, because they're such old units, they just don't quite keep up with some of the other units we've got these days. But the memoirs make such a big difference. They are the difference between winning and losing when you start getting into the higher end arena. So maybe we'll look at one or two more. Now, Joker is no joke. This guy hits hard and he's fast. So we may want to go for a similar solution here with my defensive focus team because I'm not gonna be able to outpace him very likely. So since Joker is gonna be water element because of the water one-handed sword, we're gonna make sure we've got something to protect against water because Joker is fast and he hits hard. So let's protect against water. And then let's go ahead and water, dark. Let's protect against dark, okay? Because dark is probably gonna be Lavania and Lavania hits hard. So let's go into this team. We're going to be relying on the ghost tapping thing again. This is again, why it's so important to do manual because you can fire these things off before they get a chance to fire their abilities off. Remember, Ty always goes to the defending team. If you're on auto, on manual, you make your own luck. All right, come on, make it work, make it work. Ooh, boy. Okay, so I'm lucky there was only a two chain there. There was a lot of RNG there. If Joker had gone after my Demios and hit with a three chain, I would have been toast. Let's go after Joker first. Boom, 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 boom. Let's hope that my Griff can survive this onslaught because there was a lot of damage coming his way. This is gonna be close. Oh, I got it. I think I got it. Oh, I've got it. Got it in the bag. Awesome. Awesome. Totally, totally got this. Okay, great. So the big thing is, is making sure in this case that your tank survives. That's why Demios was so important. I also gave him two zombie weapons, sub weapons, which is the water axe and the, um, and the light staff, both of which give him a recovery ability when his HP drops below 70%. That's why he saw his health bouncing around, going back and forth like that, and it did it twice. And it gave him like two extra lives because of that. He also has his innate ability which allows him to recover to 100%. So he's technically got three lives. So that makes a really big difference having those pieces of equipment as well. And of course, I'm gonna take the freebie. Good grief. So whenever you see someone there, take the freebie. I mean, they're, they're nice enough to offer. That guy's rank one. They know exactly what they're doing. They're better than I am. So I'll take advantage of them a little bit. I'll take advantage of their generosity in the closing hours of Arena. Here I go. All right, good night. Okay, so that's that. I was actually interested to, kn to know if my Noel or my Yuri was faster on that team. And I'll show you why here in a minute. minute. So this is an example of some arena combos. You saw different strategies. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the stats real quickly. So well, I've got Nimbus here who's rank one. This is probably an absolutely destructive force of nature team that will absolutely annihilate me, but let's see. Again, Joker is no joke. That dude dishes out some crazy damage. Let's just try for kicks and giggles. It's worth it. Let's take up my super tanky team against rank one and see what happens. So I'm gonna ghost tap my Demos and my Griff because oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I didn't die. All right, let's get rid of Joker first, because Joker is horrifying. Okay, watching those weapon skills, watching those weapon skills. Okay, so they have max speed, max cooldown. Ooh, mama mia. All right, you saw that bounce back, gave me an extra life. Oh my gosh. All right, Noel's probably gonna finish him off here. So, okay, the next hit has to go for Noel because she is going to absolutely destroy me if I don't. All right, we're good. 
we've got this in the bag. So again, it comes down to your tank being able to survive those hits. So we were able to take down a rank one, yay me. I was so thrilled and you can see it in my face. There's just excitement everywhere. So let's go ahead and dive in a little bit of the meat and potatoes. I'm gonna try and cut this off at about 30 minutes because this is going to be a very in-depth video, but I think it's important for people to understand arena. I think that that's a very frustrating aspect of arena is that there's just, there's kind of no clear instruction. There's no clear roadmap. So let's take a look at these characters. I've showed you a little bit about this in my previous videos. You'll notice that my Yuri is stacked. She's got high attack, max crit rate, and very high crit damage. She's got three cooldown weapons, and she's got cooldown debris, and she's got cooldown memoirs. So at the beginning of the battle, her gauge to fill is 30% full already, just automatically because of the memoir set. And then she's got an additional 10, 20, 35% speed to filling up her cooldowns. Great. That's why her cooldown, even with a weapon that has higher cooldown on its abilities, is pretty close to the same speed as a weapon that Demios has with much lower cooldown time on his abilities. Same thing with Demios, I want max cooldown. All right, but I've got a little bit more speed built into him. I actually might, yeah, I think I like having him a little bit more speed. Maybe I'd build a little bit more damage. Yeah, probably should. But anyways, moving on from there. And then this is this is kind of the uh, highlight of the deal here. This is what makes this whole team come together because the other two units are so slow. I've got Zombie Axe here, which recovery. I've got Zombie Staff here, recovery. And then you've got Griff's innate ability, recovery. So he's got three recoveries on him. He's got a set which is giving him 25% HP. Now this is only an Awakening 1 Griff. So 420,000 HP, just shy of 15,000 defense. Definitely not the best built Griff. But you saw it go and do good work in the arena. Now let's go to the next team. You saw, by the way, the speeds on these guys. They weren't that fast. This team, on the other hand, is a totally different story. All right. So not only will you notice that we've got some speed in here. Now the Saryu by far is the slowest, but you notice that I've got good crit rate on all these characters and decent crit damage. And I mean, this is the difference between agility and timed agility. This Yuri has 1800 agility but she only has two weapons that offer uh, timed agility. And between the two weapons, there's 50% timed agility. So even with 50% timed agility and 1800 agility, she's still slower than Noel with just shy of 1500 agility and then a bunch of timed agility. Now her kit, this is one of the reasons why Fractured Noel is so good, her kit has a built-in timed agility buff in it of 40%, which is massive. There's no other character that has anything like this. And then between that, she's got an extra 20% from her spear and then another 30% from the other spear, which brings her up to 90% timed agility. It caps at 100%. Her spear, in addition to that, gives her more timed agility once she starts using it. So she's maxed for timed agility once she starts using her abilities and it bumps her crit rate up. So she's maxed for crit rate as well. So this is a fast team. It's not the fastest team. And this team's also missing two critical aspects that would make it really deadly. It's missing the debris from Salvatore Marie, which grants a giant water damage steroid. And th at that point I would be equipping her with a water spear. And it's also missing the light debris from Celebratory Gale, which also grants a light steroid. And so those are the kinds of things, that's your whale privileges kicking in. If you've got those debris, good on you. You're gonna be much, this team is gonna be much more viable if you have those debris. So let's bounce over here. This is the exact same team, except Akeha instead of uh, Demios. And then this guy over here, same team as the Snipe team, except it's got Levani in it. And then we've got this team, basically the same thing. I'm just mixing and matching a little bit for different circumstances. So that is a breakdown of the teams. Now let's just for the memes, let's go in here with my, with my near Automata team. This is, the, uh, this is the gift to all of you who stuck around. I'm gonna just, for kicks and giggles, let this person see that I beat them with a full Automata team because, you know, that's just the meme team. You gotta do it. So let's just go ahead and let these guys go through. Now, 
these characters are a dude. And you, uh, I don't know why. I, I actually, I actually dumped 20 advanced handbooks into 9S to level them up to 90 for this. So uh, don't ask me why I did that, but I did. So let's go ahead and actually fight a real team this time. Let's see if there's a viable option for these guys to go up against. Now, typically what I'd be looking for is I'd be looking for a team with a tank of some kind. Hmm. Maybe a fast team would work. That Akeha is going to be a fire damage dealer. There's also a good chance of a Noel in there. I'm probably going to get my ever-loving snot kicked out of me by this team, but I'm going to try it. I am going to try it and let's just, let's see what happens here. Okay, so this is an agility tuned team. It is a pretty fast team, but they don't have a lot of the same passes that I was showing you with some of my other characters. So let's get rid of Akeha first. Oh, Shit. Ooh. Ooh, I got so, whoa, I got so unlucky. Oh, I got so unlucky. Oh, I got so unlucky. Oh, that was so bad. That was so bad. Oh, that was terrible. Oh my gosh. Single hit, single hit. Mm. Yeah, that was... I actually might have been able to have won that one. Except for that... Except for that Noel. That Noel is dangerous. So, try it one more time. Let's try it one more time. Let's see what happens. <laughs> gosh. All right, now we're just having fun and wasting time at this point, so... I'm going to put timestamps in this video. You'll see that this is just me wasting time at this point and trying to make the meme team work. That, or I could go over here to this team and hopefully not get single attacks. So let's just see. I mean, I'm going to play a little bit more arena, so I may as well do a full recovery. So let's see what happens here. <laughs> All right, let's see if the Automata meme team can make it work. But again, these guys have got the same memoirs and the same weapons as the other ones. The only difference is the characters. So the trick is to show that it can work. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my gosh, what is up with these single attacks? Okay. Well, I wasn't paying attention, so I deserve to lose that one. I forgot to charge up my abilities. So... That is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm totally gonna lose this one. It's kind of interesting though, that even with me not paying attention how close that fight was, I'm not gonna waste any more of my, my placements, but this is top 10, top 20. So this is very competitive and those are three very old units. So for anything outside of this, that actually works. You can actually make that team work, but let's just take it in comparison. Let's take this team and do it with, uh, let's do it with a regular old agility rush team here. Let's see how, let's see if I can win with this team. I mean, let's take it side by side because that was an agility rush team. This is an agility rush team. Let's just see what happens here. And we'll probably see the difference of that timed agility from my own Noel. So let's see if we could snipe their Noel first. Before it gets a chance to attack. Who are you? Nope, my team is not faster. What is up? Oh. See, this is the RNG. This is where it just absolutely sucks because I single attack, single attack, that Noel should have been long dead. So this is what frustrates me about agility teams. And it's just, it's mad being for me. So that's why I don't sink a whole lot of time into them. And I'll show you the difference between an agility kind of RNG heavy team. Let's go ahead and take that to my really slow tank team. And let's just see what happens. Because I'm not faster than that Noel. That Noel is really fast. So let's just go back to the tried and true. All right. Let's give this another shot with my regular old bunker buster team. We've got dark and water switch that over to dark and so again you're gonna have the advantage here because you're playing with you're basically playing the game you're playing the board you know exactly what's gonna happen so we're gonna do I'm gonna go back to doing my ghost tapping I'm gonna be expecting a lot of incoming damage 
and then I'll play it off from there. I'm gonna just expect my Yuri to nuke the entire other team. Prepare to beg for your life. <laughs> In your face. <laughs> Jeez. Suck on that. Alright. So abilities are charged. Boom, 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 boom. You don't want to jump the gun on clicking on those abilities. And I've done this a few times where you click on the ability and it fires off too quickly. And then uh, your other abilities are basically kept on hold, on pause, while you, uh, ooh, I really hope that, ooh, boy. Okay, lucky, got lucky. But you can see how much how much <laughs> more mellow that was, how much smoother pace that was. So these celebratory units, and I'm just going to say this again, and I'm probably going to leave it here. This was a pretty this was a pretty in depth guide to things. If it's a higher team power, it's usually going to have newer big hitting units with a lot of haste and cooldown, and uh, a lot of EX weapons, which means that you're going to be fighting up against probably characters that have primary EX weapons in their main hand, or that have a ton of cooldown in their secondary EX weapons. It also probably is, there's a very good chance you're going to be running into a team with a tank on it. And so you can usually look at the elements on the team. You can see what you're going to be going up against. Usually if there's water or light in there, it's almost, it's very likely you're going to have a fractured Noel in there. My fractured Noel doesn't have any awakenings either, so she's very basic. But there's plenty of people out there that have got fully awakened Noels. And so this has just been a little taste of what, and let's go over here to my other team here. This has just been a really basic taste of what you can expect. And hopefully it's, hopefully it's been informative just to kind of give you some ways to build some ideas for building really three different main strategies in there. Pure speed, uh, pure defense, a little bit of mixed defense with hybrid bunker buster. And let's go ahead and... I'll protect you all. Ooh, boy. Yeah, that is a hybrid team. So it really just depends. And the more you play it, the more you see what these things look like. So let's go ahead and fire off abilities. Mm, I may have misjudged that one. I was expecting a tank to be in there, so I may actually lose this one. Because I don't have the damage mitigation from Demos coming in. So if they're able to squeak this off, ooh, yeah, he's dead in the next attack. So unless my Akeha gets in there and interrupts... Oh, boy. No, I'm toast. I think I lost that one. I think I lost that one. Can a companion squeak it out? Oh. <laughs> I got lucky. Peace out, y'all. Have a great evening. I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.